Yesterday, we were introducing the idea of chemical reactions. Okay? We said that a chemical reaction occurs when atoms are separated, joined, or rearranged. We looked at a few examples of that. We looked at a synthesis reaction, where atoms are joined. We looked at a decomposition reaction, where atoms are separated. And we looked at a combustion reaction, which is a complex rearrangement of the atoms within compounds. Okay? It is a reaction between a hydrocarbon and oxygen that always produces carbon dioxide and water. And we talked about the special balancing rules they involve for all um, hydrocarbon combustion reactions. Those special balancing rules were that we have to balance them in alphabetical order and that we have to follow the rule of two. Okay. Normally I do a yoga voice, but my voice is a little bit hoarse, so I'm not going to try it because it sounds it doesn't sound bad. Usually I do a pretty good job of it. But okay. Um, so for that one, okay, remember that if we have an even number of carbons, okay, then we uh, start our balancing with a two. All right. We're going to go over the last two types of reactions today. Then we're going to look at writing them, balancing them, and kind of getting practiced up with that because obviously we're going to be doing a lab next week to do with chemical reactions. All right, so the next reaction type we call a single replacement reaction. Single replacement reactions involve ionic compounds and elements. Okay, they are a reaction between an ionic compound and a single element, always. All right, that is the definition of a single replacement reaction. What happens in a single replacement reaction is the lone element replaces the part of the ionic compound that it is like. So in the example we have here, okay, we have copper by itself, meaning it's an element. Right? Copper is a metal. It is going to react with silver nitrate, which is an ionic compound. When they react, the element, in this case copper, will replace the part of the compound that it's like. That is, it's going to replace the metal, silver. Okay? So basically, we'll have a swap like this going on. What ends up on the other side then is silver, because it's now been replaced, okay? and we have copper nitrate, our new ionic compound. So in a single replacement reaction, we start with a compound and an element, an ionic compound and an element, and we end with an ionic compound and an element, okay? but a different ionic compound and a different free element. Right? Everybody with me there? Now, the thing we have to remember here is that replacement reactions have to work in a certain way. That is, I always have to end up with an ionic compound and an element. I can't end up with a molecular compound and an element. Okay? I have to end up with an ionic compound. So, imagine that chemistry is very old-fashioned. Right? This guy here, that's copper. Guy wearing the orange shirt. Okay? That's copper. This guy, silver. This girl, nitrate. Right? This guy likes her. So he rolls this guy. Takes him out. Okay? Takes his place. Replaces him. See? Silver all looking sad. Okay? Walking away. Okay? Copper. Now, I don't know, that looks dangerous, but fun. Okay, uh, so he's he's dancing with her now. All right, but notice because chemistry is old-fashioned. Okay, that the two guys didn't end up together. Okay, chemistry is old-fashioned. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, there's nothing wrong with two guys ending up together. But in chemistry, I can't get an ionic compound with two metals. Okay, it's just an analogy. We're not making any social commentary. It's just an analogy. Okay, so I can't end up with two metals together. Metals don't bond to each other. That just doesn't happen. Okay, so. I have to always have a metal and a non-metal, right? So we're using male and female to represent that, okay? Um, and then obviously the metal ends up by itself. If this was a different situation where I had a non-metal, then there'd be a lady here, guy and a girl, okay? And then the, the, the ladies would switch places, okay? And one of them would end up by themselves, okay? Same deal, all right? But we have to end up with a metal and a non-metal together, okay? Two things that are different have to end up together to make that ionic compound. You want to follow on that? All right, um, so with, ion with um, single replacement reactions, 
We actually have to watch out for a lot of things in a single replacement reaction. They can very often produce special elements, that is ones that need twos or fours or eights, okay, our polyatomic or molecular elements that we talked about yesterday, these ones, all right, those can be produced in a single replacement reaction because we are, after all, going to produce a free element. So if I had this reaction here, okay, so now chlorine, which is a non-metal, is my free element, okay, potassium fluoride is my ionic compound, so, okay, whoop. so we got, come on, wait. Okay, so I've got um, like you know the girl here, the guy and the girl here, okay, and they're going to have a replacement reaction. So who is chlorine going to replace? Fluorine. Fluorine. Going to replace fluorine. It's going to end up with potassium, right? It's got to replace the non-metal, right? So what I'm going to end up with is fluorine by itself and potassium chloride. Okay, what's wrong with this reaction? It's not balanced, okay? I've predicted the products correctly, which incidentally we're going to get to later on this week, okay? But I have not balanced the reaction, right? So I have made a special element, and I have to remember that, so I remember to put a 2 beside it, and an ionic compound, which I would obviously have to drop and swap and make sure it's correct. Now that those things are done, now I've got to look at balancing the whole reaction. So on this side, I've got two chlorines. What do we call this side of the reaction? These are the reactants, right? And these are the products. Okay, so on the reactant side, I've got two chlorine. But over here, I only have one. Okay, so that'll fix the problem? No, I can't do that. Okay, that's not swapped and dropped correctly. All I can do is make more or less of an entire molecule. I can't just put in small numbers and say, I'll fix the molecule by making it different. I can't change the molecule. I can change how much of it. Isn't that kind of like playing God, though? Instead of, like, you kind of just make two more molecules just to balance out the equation, or does it do No, I'm not playing God. This is what has to happen. In order for this reaction to work, I have to have a certain number of everything. In fact, I'm making sure I don't play God by not destroying or creating matter okay. the, with the way I write the reaction, right? So, so like, this, it, this would happen naturally, how it makes yes. two of them instead to balance them out. Yeah. Oh, okay. The reaction wouldn't happen unless I had this much stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay, when I put that 2 here, it balances my chlorine, but now I have 2 potassium here. So what needs to go here? Yeah. Right, and when I do that, does that make the fluorine work? Yes, yeah. yeah, it does. Okay, always a good sign if the last number you put in makes the thing you were left with balance. Okay. Alright, is that ringing a bell? I'm making, that's not ringing a bell, it's new to you. Okay, is it making sense? Yeah. Okay, the balancing part we sort of talked about. All right, so single replacement reactions are probably the trickiest when we get to predicting the products, okay? Because so much stuff can happen. You can get special elements. You've got to drop and swap ionic compounds. There's lots of stuff to think about. The pattern is actually pretty easy to recognize. Element, compound, and that's it. All right, the last reaction type, double replacement. In a double replacement reaction, two ionic compounds react with each other. Okay? They are only ionic compounds. Okay? In a replacement reaction, you will only have ionic compounds. Exception, guess what it would be? Water. Yeah, because water is the exception to everything. Okay? Water can actually behave in a double replacement reaction like an ionic compound. So we actually write water in a replacement reaction like an ionic compound. Okay, H plus and OH minus. Still H2O, right? Still two H's and one O, right? Here's also the reason why water is neutral. Acid, base, okay? It's got the two things involved, right? Anything that's got hydrogen acting as a metal is an acid. Anything that's got OH as the non-metal is a base. They cancel each other out, water is neutral, okay? So we write water in a replacement reaction as an ionic compound HOH. It's way easier to track where everything goes that way. All right, so in this reaction here, I've got calcium chloride, an ionic compound, reacting with sodium carbonate, also an ionic compound. When we do that, we get calcium carbonate 
as a precipitate, okay, it's listed here as a solid, okay, and sodium chloride still dissolved in water. The AQ means aqueous, means dissolved in water. Okay, again, you're not going to ever have to write the S's and AQ's and L's and G's, okay, but that's what they mean just in case you're curious. All right, so all that happens in a double replacement reaction is the metals change partners. Okay, so anytime you have a double replacement reaction, you just swap the metals and you'll have your two new ionic compounds. Over here, calcium was with chlorine. Over here, it's with carbonate. And sodium ends up with chlorine. Okay, they just switch. So in that way, double replacement reactions are probably the easiest ones to predict. Their balancing can get a little bit tricky sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to give you a double replacement reaction here, and I want you to see if you can tell me what the products will be and balance it. I know that's asking a lot, but let's see. Double replacement reaction because I've only written the first part, the reactant. Right? Okay, I've got two elements, but I've also got two, what kind of compounds? Ionic compounds. If I have a reaction that starts with two ionic compounds, it is a double replacement reaction. That's the only kind of reaction that starts with two ionic compounds. Uh, some reaction stuff will be on the test. Probably just identifying types okay, of reactions. Um, so in a double replacement reaction, what did we say happens again? The metals, the metals switch partners. Okay, see if you can write out the two compounds that would be produced in this reaction. Okay, two new ionic compounds from this reaction. So in this reaction, lead starts out with nitrate, potassium starts out with iodine. Who is going to end up with lead on this side? Iodine, iodine right. I've got to make an ionic compound. Now, in order to make sure this compound is dropped and swapped correctly, I need to know what charge iron ha or sorry, lead has. So I'm going to go back to this side. Nitrate's a minus 1, and there are two nitrates here. So that's two negative charges. So this is the lead with the? Two plus charge. All right, so that's going to be lead two plus, iodine's one minus, so we got PbI2. All right, that compound's good. So who does potassium end up with then? Nitrate. With nitrate. Okay, nitrate's a minus one, potassium's a plus one, so that compound is good the way it's written. There are my products. Okay, once you know the patterns, and we only have five reactions to know the patterns of, it's easy to predict what the products will be because you just have to follow the pattern. In a double replacement reaction, you switch the metals and you have your products. In a single replacement reaction, you switch the element with the part of the compound it's like and you've got your new products. Okay? In a combustion reaction, you always get CO2 and water. So there's nothing you can think about there. It's just a matter of memorizing. It's always CO2 and water. Okay? In a synthesis reaction, we just put the elements together. And then in a decomposition reaction, we just pull them apart. Right? It's the patterns are easy to remember, so the, the products are easy to predict. Okay? It's not a matter of ever guessing. You will never have to guess what the products would be. Now what do I need to do with this reaction? Balance. I need to balance it. Okay? Right now, things are out of balance. What should I balance first? I should balance what's in the largest number. Okay? For any reaction other than combustion, we go with the largest number of, of uh, atoms first. Okay? So that could be either iodine, which is a 2, or nitrate, which is a 2. Okay? Either one. I could pick either one. So I'm going to start over here on the reactant side and say I'm going to balance nitrate. There are two nitrates over here. How many over here? One. Okay, so what, but that's a very common, that's a very common mistake. We, we want to make sure that we address that. Right, this 3 is part of the nitrate. So I'm going to put a 2 
in front of this. Now my nitrates are balanced. But putting that 2 there gives me how many potassium? Two. 2. 2. So i got to go back over here and put what here? 2. two. When I do that, does that make my iodine work? Yeah, because now there's 2 iodine here and 2 over there. How many lead here? 1. How many lead here? 2. 1. one. We're good. Okay, remember, the little 2 only applies to what it's immediately next to. Big 2 applies to everything here. Okay. All right. Making some sense? Yeah. Okay. We're going to spend quite a bit of time on this, so don't worry. Okay. All right. So this is this uh, slide here. Just basically talked about what we just talked about. When you're writing a chemical reaction, okay, you got to write out all your chemicals, so your reactants, your products. You got to balance them. Okay, for all reactions other than combustion, that means start with the biggest number and go from there. If it doesn't work out, you erase the numbers. You start over again. That happens once in a while. Okay? Most of the time, starting with the biggest number, you get it balanced the first try. Okay? And by most of the time, I mean like 95% of the time. There's the odd reaction where you'll get to the end and go, ah, crap, that one didn't work. i got to start with something else. Okay? But it's very rare. All right. This is what I want you to do. Okay? For these ones, let's just do the first four here. Okay? I want you to write or do three things for each reaction. First, identify what type of reaction is. You just look in your notes for that. Synthesis, decomp, combustion, single or double replacement. Okay? Identify the type. Just write SR or SIN beside it. Okay? Then I want you to write it out in words. Okay? So basically name everything in it. Okay? And then try and balance it. Okay? So identify the type, write it out in words, and balance it. Those are the three things I want you to try to do with these four. All right, I'll give you a few minutes, and then we'll walk through the first couple. All right, on our first one, I've got an element reacting with an element to form a compound. What reaction type is that? It's a synthesis reaction. All right, so now I've got a balance. What should I balance first? NH3. Okay, which part of NH3? Hydrogen. Got the biggest number. All right, so what I'm going to do is look at, I've got a 3 here and a 2 here. Okay, what's the lowest common multiple? Six. 6. Okay, so if I put a 2 here, that will give me 6 hydrogens. It also makes my nitrogen balance, which is nice. Okay, I just need to go over here and make sure I have 6 hydrogens on the reactant side, which means I put a 3 here, and now my reaction is in fact balanced. Okay. And then i got to write it out in words. What's this stuff? Nitrogen. Do I put a die in front of it because there's a 2 there? No. no, it's an element. It's one of the special elements. It doesn't change its name. All right, what's this stuff? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. Okay, and that's going to give... What's this stuff? Is this ionic or molecular? molecular. It's molecular. All right, so it's going to be nitrogen... Tri hydride. More commonly known as ammonia. <coughs> the stuff that's in a glass cleaner. And if you ever smell Windex, that's ammonia. Alright, how many people have done the second one? Okay, let me give you a little bit more time. Okay, on our second one, we have an element. Reacting with an ionic compound to produce a different ionic compound and a different element. What kind of reaction? Single, single replacement. All right, so we have a single replacement reaction. What should I balance first? The carbon on the, yeah, the product. Okay, a calcium. Or calcium. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I should balance the calcium first. It's the biggest number. So there's three on this side, and there's only one over here. Okay, so if I put a 3 here, that balances my calcium. It gives me how many chlorine? 6. All right, so what needs to go here? Hmm? Okay, and then my nitrogen's a 2 here and a 2 here, so that looks good. Okay, it's balanced now. All right, when I write this out in words, it's going to look like this. N2 is nitrogen. CaCl2 is calcium chloride. Okay, 
And then Ca3N2 is calcium nitride. And then we got Cl2, which is just chlorine. Okay, so you know, if you were to get a question like this, and you would, okay, this would be a three or a four mark question. You would get, uh, if it was a four mark question, you would get a mark for the identification of the reaction type. You would get a mark for balancing. You'd get a mark for the reactants being written correctly and a mark for the products being written correctly. If it was a three mark question, you'd only get one mark for having all of the compounds written correctly in the name. Okay? So, later on, near the end of this unit, you will get a 30 reaction assignment worth 90 marks. Each one worth three marks. Okay? And this is exactly what you will have to do on 10 of the 30 questions. Okay. Another 10 will be predict the products of the reaction. Here's just the reactants, predict the products. Okay. And then another one that will be, I give you the reaction in word form, like it is here in blue, and you have to write the actual number equation instead. Okay. That's where we're headed to. All right, how many people have done these two? How many people have done the third one? Yeah, let's look at the third one. All right, in the third one, I've got carbon and hydrogen reacting with oxygen. My products are water and carbon dioxide. What kind of reaction is this? Combustion. It's a combustion reaction. This is the combustion of methane. If someone lit their fart on fire, this is the reaction. I kid you not. Okay? That's methane. That's that. Apparently, you can really do that. I think that's dangerous because I don't want you to be burned there. <laughs> okay? All right. So, um, we got a combustion reaction. How do I balance this one? What do I start with? The carbon. Do I need a two here? Yes. No. One is an odd number. It's also the loneliest number. It sounds like a song. We don't know one is the loneliest number. Yeah, you should know one is the loneliest number. You can search it on iTunes later. Okay. All right. So. I'm just going to keep a one here because one's an odd number. Okay, there's one carbon, there's one carbon. Perfect, that started out well. Okay, four hydrogens over here, there are two hydrogens. So I need to put a two here. Okay, now I'm going to balance the oxygens. Two oxygens here in the carbon dioxide, two more here in the water for a total of four. Two times two is four, and I'm done. Now, if you put a 2 in front of this, could you still balance the reaction? Yeah. Yes. Will it be right? No. Reactions are balanced in lowest terms. Your numbers will all be double what the lowest terms would be, because you'd have got uh, 2, 4, 4, 2. Okay? And that's double what it could be. They could all be reduced down. Always look for that. All right, writing this out in words, I have carbon tetrahydride, or methane, okay, reacting with oxygen to produce water, and please just call it that. Okay? Anytime you see HOH or H2O in a reaction, just write water. It's the one thing you can use the common name for. Could you write methane? Um, yes, you could if you knew that, okay, but like on a, let's say, assignment, if I'm seeing the common names for everything, I know you just Googled it all, because I'm not teaching you any of the common names okay, for anything, so just keep that in mind, because I've had people do that, where they clearly Googled the name of absolutely everything on the entire assignment, okay, and if they didn't use the proper naming rules. No. All right, so water and uh, carbon dioxide. Okay, give you a few more minutes and I'm going to put a couple more up here for those of you that are that far. And so you can keep going on those. Okay, still doing the same thing. So on our fourth one, we have a compound and then it breaks down into two elements. What kind of reaction is that? 
simple decomposition. There's only one reaction type with a single reactant. Everything else is this plus this. Simple decomposition is the only reaction type we have where there's only one reactant. Okay? So simple decomposition or decomp is fine. Okay? Um, all right, now I've got to um, balance this. What should I start with? Yeah, start with the sulfur. That's by far the biggest number, okay? and it'll, it'll work out from there. So I got eight sulfur on this side, on the product side. How many do I have on the reactant side? Just two. So what do I need to put in front of this? A four, because four times two will give me eight. All right, when I do that, it gives me um, how many nitrogen? Twelve. Twelve. What do I need to put in front of the nitrogen on the product side? Six. All right, it's balanced. And I can't make that any lower because this is a one. Okay? We don't normally write ones, by the way, unless it's a fill in the blank. Okay? If you're just balancing and it's fill in the blanks, put ones in the blanks. Otherwise, I don't know whether you did it or not. Okay? Especially if it's all ones. If it's already balanced, that happens sometimes. Put ones in every blank. Otherwise, it just looks like you didn't do it. Yeah? All right. Um, now I'm going to write out the, the names for all of these. So this is a molecular compound. So we're going to have... Um, trinitrogen disulfide. Okay. And that's going to break down into nitrogen and sulfur. <coughs> Simple as that. Okay. How many people have done the next one? I did it, but I'm just rewriting it because I think it's a little too okay. Let's go through. So in this one here, I've got an element reacting with a compound. It's forming a different uh, element and a different compound. And both of those compounds are ionic compounds. What kind of reaction is this? Single replacement reaction, right? All right. What should I balance first? Yeah, chlorine or iodine. It really doesn't make any difference. It'll, the end result will be the same. So we'll start here with chlorine. There's two chlorine on this side. But on the product side, there's only one. So what do I need to put in front of this? Huh? When I do that, it gives me two sodiums. So I've got to go back over here and make sure I've got two sodiums. Putting that two there gives me two iodines. And there's two on the product side. And now the reaction is balanced. Writing this one out in words looks like this. Chlorine plus sodium iodide. Gives iodine plus sodium chloride. Okay, now, just so you're aware, this is the easier of the ways, or the easiest of the ways you could be asked a reaction question. You're given the actual chemical equation. Everything has already been dropped and swapped for you if it, if it needed it. Okay. Any special elements have already been identified for you. It's much different if I give you the word equation and ask you to write out the actual chemical equation. Because now you have to remember, is it a special element? You've got to drop and swap the ionic compounds, get the prefixes right, all of that kind of stuff. Okay? So it's a bit trickier going the other way because there's more to do. Um, for like the tests and stuff, for mm -hmm. like when we get uh, like a question like this, yep. should we already assume that it's like already dropped and swapped? If I give you the reaction in formula form like this, yes, yes I will so have already, already right. It'll okay. already be done. Yeah. The only time you'll have to do it is if you have to write that form of the equation. All right, I'll give you guys a few more minutes, and then we'll look at the other two there. Okay. So for the second to last one. I've got an ionic compound reacting with an ionic compound to form two different ionic compounds. What kind of reaction? Double replacement. Double replacement. Okay. Writing this, or sorry, balancing this one. What should I balance first? Uh, actually, uh, I'm not going to balance the three because there's actually only one carbonate. Oh. Right? You're right. I mean, I want to go with the biggest number. Three is the biggest number in there, but because carbonate is one unit, there's only one carbonate, and it's already balanced. There's one carbonate over here on the products. There's one carbonate on the reactants. 
Sodium and chlorine, however, are both out of balance. Okay? Both of them are a 2 on the reactant side, but they're together and a 1 on the product side. So what should I put in front of it here? 2. two. Does that take care of everything? Yeah, yeah it does actually. Okay? There's one calcium here on the product side, or sorry, on the reactant side, one on the product side. 2 chlorine, now there are 2 chlorine over here. 2 sodium over here, now there are 2 sodium on the reactant side. Okay, 1 carbonate, 1 carbonate. All I have to do is put that 2 in there, and the reaction is balanced. Okay, once in a while you get one like that where you only have to add one number. Well, sometimes you don't have to add any numbers. But that's pretty rare. Okay, uh, writing this one out in words, we've got calcium chloride. Okay, reacting with sodium carbonate. Okay, that's going to make calcium carbonate. And sodium chloride. Okay, what kind of reaction am I looking at on the last one? Double replacement. Everything's ionic. Remember, we write water as an ionic compound. It's HOH. And the reason we write it as HOH here is it's easier to track where the parts of it came from. The hydrogen here came from the hydrogen chloride. The OH came from the potassium uh, hydroxide. So it's easier to track where it comes from. All right, double replacement. Now i got to balance it. Done. Okay, Guys, if there are no little numbers, everything is a... One, right? Everything's a one. If there's no little numbers, that makes it easy. Everything's already balanced then. All right? Now I gotta write it out in words. Okay, I got hydrogen chloride. Okay, reacting with potassium hydroxide. Okay, and that is gonna give us um, water. Sorry, arrow. Water, which you can write as water, plus potassium chloride. Okay, and this is a typical acid-base reaction. Here's your acid, here's your base, and when you react an acid with a base, you get water and a salt. Okay, or ionic compound. Right, you always get that as a result of an acid-base reaction. Okay, questions on what we did there? Uh, that's what we were already doing. Let's see if you guys can try something like this. Okay, so now I give you the reaction in words. And now you have to write out the reaction in formula form, identify the type and balance. Would you tell us to write out a formula? Do you want to write that in sentence or like just the words? Uh, well, you'll know because if I give you the reaction that's in equation form, then I want it the other way. If I give it to you in word form. Do you want us to like write it the, the reacts with magnesium to form, or do you just want the No, word? you can write <laughs> plus. No, plus. yeah, just put the plus in the word okay. reaction, like I did on the other ones, okay. yeah. Don't, you don't have to make it a story or sentence okay. or, yeah. Which one do you want us to? So on these ones, I want you to write out the equation. No, no, but what number? No. Oh, let's say <coughs> six to nine. Okay. Yeah. What do you want us to Like just the equation? So I want the equation, reaction type, balance. All right, so number six is our first one where you're given the word equation and you have to come up with the actual chemical equation. So copper two nitrate. So I've got to write the formula for copper two nitrate. So copper with the two plus charge is with nitrate, NO3. That's a one minus, okay? So we're looking at CuNO3 two for copper two nitrate. Is reacting with magnesium that's just Mg, okay, to form magnesium nitrate. Okay, again, this is an ionic compound, so I've got to go 2 plus, 1 minus, so we got this plus copper. Okay, what kind of reaction is that? That is a single replacement reaction. What do I need to do with this reaction? Balance it. Good. Looks good to me. 
All right, I got one copper on this side, one copper on the product side, two nitrates on the reactants, two nitrates in the products, one magnesium on each side, so we're good. All right, so that is all that you would have to do for that one. That would be three marks. Okay, so one for having the reaction written out. If it was a four mark question, it'd be one for the reactants, one for the products. Okay, um, and then you'd have one mark for balancing and one mark for the type. How many people have done seven? I'm still working. Okay, I'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll go through seven and eight. So on number seven, I have um, C12H26, which is dodecane, I think is a common name. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to write C12H26. Okay, reacts with oxygen gas, O2, to produce carbon dioxide, CO2, and water, H2O. In a combustion reaction, right water is H2O. In a replacement reaction, the right is HOH. Okay? All right. What kind of reaction is this? Combustion, combustion reaction. Okay. What do I balance first? Carbon. Okay, because I balance alphabetically. Do I need... You have to add the two at the front. Because the carbon is an even number. Right. So I've got to use the rule of two and then balance alphabetically. Two times 12 is 24. I've got to put a 24 there. It is possible for combustion reactions to have ridiculously large numbers. Okay? Um, 2 times 26 is 52. 26 times 2 is 52. So now my hydrogens work. Okay? Now I've got to balance my oxygens. I have 24 times 2 is 48 plus another 26, so that's 74, right? Okay, 74 divided by 2 is 37, yes? All right, it's balanced. I just have a question, because can't you do, for like the carbon dioxide, can't you do like 12 times 2 or no? No, because if I, if I divide this one by 2, I've got to divide them all by 2, and that'll give me a decimal here. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, how many people have done 8? Okay, let's have a look at 8. So lithium nitride breaks down, so I got lithium with nitrogen, that's an ionic compound, so I've got to check the charges, minus 3 plus 1, so I'm going to have Li3N, breaks down, okay, here's where knowing the special elements is important, it breaks down into nitrogen and lithium, did I write this right? What's wrong? Nitrogen is special. If I don't put the two here, it is possible that I won't be able to balance the reaction, or it's possible that I won't balance it correctly. I might actually make it work, but I won't have the right chemicals, and thus it will be wrong. Okay? So now that I'm looking at this, okay, if we always say balance the largest number first. On this reaction, this is one of that 5% that that won't work. Because okay? if I just go 3, Three, then I'm going to go, oh, darn it, this doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to balance the nitrogens first. Okay, because I can already see that trying to balance the lithium first is not going to work and I'm going to end up erasing everything. So there's two nitrogen over here. I'm going to put a two in front of this. That gives me how many lithium? Six. 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 Now my reaction is balanced in the lowest terms. All right, what kind of reaction is that? Simple decomposition. Right. right? How many people have done nine and ten? Okay. Now do nine and ten. Hopefully we'll get those done before class ends here. So for number nine, I've got hydrogen sulfide. Okay, so hydrogen with sulfur, that's an ionic compound. Sulfur is a minus 2, hydrogen is a plus 1, so we're looking at H2S for hydrogen sulfide. It reacts with calcium hydroxide, Ca with OH. This is a minus 1, this is a plus 2, so I'm going to need brackets with the 2 outside of the brackets. Okay, and that is going to uh, make, on the other side, calcium sulfide. Minus 2, plus 2, so that one's fine the way it's written, and water. 
since this is a replacement reaction, specifically double replacement, I'm writing water as HOH because it's easier to track where the H's and OH's come from. All right, since we've already said this is a double replacement reaction, what should I balance first? Carbon. I don't have carbon. Oh, I have calcium, calcium, but it's already balanced. There's one here and there's one here, so it's good. Hydrogen. I can actually do hydrogen or hydroxide, either one, because they go together over here. They're going to have the same number, right? So there's two hydrogens, so I'm going to put a two here. That makes my hydrogens work and gives me two hydroxides. There's two hydroxides over here. We're done. It's balanced. All right, and then for number 10, we've got phosphorus reacts with oxygen to produce triphosphorus dioxide. Do anything wrong? You have to add the numbers for the phosphorus and the oxygen. Right, both special elements. I remember that. Otherwise, I won't get the balancing or the reaction right. All right, what should I balance first? Phosphorus, biggest number. There's four here, three over there. What's the lowest common multiple? Well, okay, so three here and a four there makes my phosphorus work. Four times two is eight. Four times two is eight. Reactions balanced. What kind is it? Okay. Seems like we're getting this. You guys are doing all right. Tomorrow you will have a quiz. You will not have to do balancing and that kind of stuff. You basically just have some naming and some uh, identification of reaction types. Okay, so a lot of reactions tell me it's synthesis, double replacement, that kind of thing. I will post that, as always, 320 today. Thank you.